everyone, and welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy, Ivorian Spice, and welcome to the Catch Up Volume 32. Another week, another brand new show. Of course, the popular opinion, as always. A good week for Manchester United. Of course, Europa League, we won. The Premier League against Newcastle, we won three points in the bag, of course. I'm happy with that. But apart from the performance, psh, trash as always. But of course, guys, remember, if you're new to the show, remember to subscribe, smash that like button. Remember to share because sharing Ivory and Spice is caring. And of course, we're here with a, a guest, a special guest. We have Z here. And of course, we have the usual boys, Jex and Amuk, always. And Jex, man, how you been this week, man? What are you saying? I can't really complain this week, you know, off the back of two wins. Hopefully we can just keep the ball rolling now and keep it going, you know? So, yeah, it's been a good week. And Amuk, man, how you been this week? I've been good, you know. As Jake said, good week. Two games. Right, come on. It's been a better week than the past few weeks, though. Definitely, man. And Z, special guest, how are you doing? Welcome to Red United TV. We would like to accommodate you here, especially. Now, we're all happy to see you. It's a honor and it's a pleasure. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me, Spice. No, you know, really good week for us. You know, we get, get, we're gaining those points, we're getting those numbers, and that's all that matters, right? Definitely. And of course, guys, if you're new to the show, this is the show where we talk about the hottest debate going around Manchester United, the previous match that we've just witnessed yesterday. And of course, we talk about the hot and latest news. This week, we're going to be talking about the game against Newcastle. Yes, we're going to dive straight into that game. Of course, we'll look at the Premier League roundup, match day 25. And of course, my favourite part of the show, which is game of the week. And of, lastly, we will be topping it off with the match preview against Real Sociedad in the Europa League this week. And also those, you know, those Blues, Chelsea, we have them in the weekend. And hopefully we'll just, we want to win. But again, we go straight into that match against Newcastle. Points, we got the three points in terms of the performance. Shite, as always, watching Manchester United for, for 90 minutes isn't the best thing for any of you. And it's not good for your soul. It's not really good for your soul. And I always advise people, as I always said, you know, Manchester United or Match the Day FC, Highlight Real FC, YouTube Football, YouTube Highlight FC. Because why? What? All you see is individual brilliance. You're just going to see the best out of Manchester United. You should never, ever watch full 90 minutes of Manchester United because it will kill you. It definitely will kill you. In fact, put the radio on because you won't be disappointed with the performance. I'm telling you guys. If you put the radio on, you'll be fine. But if you watch it, guys, see how you doing because that game, you know, I'm happy. But in terms of the performance, mm -mm. How do you feel about that game? No, I completely have to agree with you. You know, we always be sleeping in the first 45 minutes and it's only the second half that we seem to be waking up. You know, like I mentioned before, it's the reason why we concede so many goals at the beginning of the match. You know, we need to come strong in the second half as we do, um, come strong in the first half like we do in the second half. And like you said, dead game, just not worth the watch. Oh, Steph, man. And Jax, man, how did you feel about that game in general? You know what? Z said it all. It was a poor, poor performance in the first 45 minutes, especially. If Wilson wasn't injured, <laughs> we might have had a, a couple more problems on our hands because they had more attempts on goal than us in the first 45 minutes. Newcastle at Old Trafford. Any other team in the league, we would have been losing maybe 2-1 two, two, or 3-1 in that first 45 minutes. So for me, that's a massive red flag. But as I've been saying all along, it's all about the three points. The boys done well to come back, albeit a shit performance. The three points is the main thing, isn't it? So we move on. And what about you, Amuk, man? How did you feel about that game? Right. I was just happy that we got the three points because we, we actually did need it. Because the last few games, I think we drew. So three points, definite. But performance files, nah, baba. Mm -mm. It's just hurtful. The other that was calling you know, um, in Tottenham, Junior, mm -hmm. I don't even know how to call us. 
Uh, it's just like it's just a shame. I don't want to dis- I don't want to disrespect the team though, but the performance yesterday was terrible. Like you playing at Old Trafford against a team that's struggling. They actually got three points. If was it could pull them in the next game and um, Newcastle draw or lose, it's big for them. So like we always struggle against teams that's struggling to stay in the Premier League. Definitely. Don't get. Like I don't get. But like where you gonna be? You're optimistic. Take this three point and look forward to what happens next. But it was a terrible performance. I agree, I agree. See that, guys? We just sound like a bunch of professional footballers who just played the full 90 minutes and won the game. And then we've been interviewed. It's all about the three points at the end of the day. I didn't score, but it's about the three points because I play shit. I play shit. It's a joke. In terms of the performance, man, why is it that Manchester United just struggle to play against teams that just play low block? And yet, time and time again, we play two defensive midfielders against a team where we should be attacking. Oli again, setting up the team with two defensive midfielders. Vindelof, of course, Maguire started again. Favoritism. We saw Daniel James play. I don't know whether he deserved it because of the previous game, but of course he did deserve it. Mark Shreffer, of course. But Manchester United being unable to open up Newcastle. Newcastle having the better chances in the first 45 minutes. Do you know what, guys? Yeah. I knew you was coming to me. I could feel it. Go on. (laughs) We can't even blame no low block because Newcastle were at it yesterday. They were actually playing on the front foot. True. So normally at Old Trafford, teams sit back and we find it hard to break them down. But it wasn't the case yesterday. Newcastle actually came out. They wanted the points. They want to stay up, isn't it? They mm-hmm. weren't sitting back. So the lack of movement for me, for Martial up top, I don't want to keep bagging on about him because I know it's just low confidence. He will get better, I hope. I've been saying it. He needs to be the Rashford's understand to study on the left-hand side. And we need to get Greenwood and Cavani up there, for me personally. But again, Martial wasn't great for me, unfortunately. Another bad game. I Is think that... he needs to play the next game, you know? Ziz, what do you have to say about that? Because I see you shaking your head in disgust. <laughs> you What's know, I then? think he... Martial, man, I've been complaining about this guy for time. Listen, yeah, I know he's your French connect, Spice, but the guy <laughs> only comes to perform when Pogba's around. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, he's, he's a, a French connection. It's a French connect, exactly. But you can't just be doing that. You know what I mean? This ain't the World Cup. This ain't no France thing. Like, you need to be able to perform all times, you know, and he's just not doing it. He's lazy. The guy does not put in the work. I have not seen Martial run. He had what, one shot on goal? Mm-hmm. And and it was one on one with the goalkeeper, and what he didn't even come on, he could have converted that easily into a goal. The guy, ugh. yeah, I'm tired, I'm tired of Martial, honestly. I'm old, man. What did you, what do you have to say about that? About Martial in general and his performance, just like what we said last week, it's a situation that can't defend Martial because obviously, I like him as a player, but like Jake said before, he's actually looking confident, like he needs that confidence to get back to what he used to do last season. Like, we hope, because we're going to be optimistic. But what Jake said, I'll go with it, change the system a little bit, because we actually got, got good players who could change. I watched um, Greenwood yesterday. He said he don't mind playing anywhere in the top four. I have all, I have a place he's happy to play that forward. You just give him. You know what I mean? Like, you got players. Like, James coming into the team makes it a bit different. But I get what Ali was trying to do the past two games. He's going to use James' pace to beat him, which didn't work against West Brom, but it worked yesterday. So, like I said, it's just different system with, that we face different big with different teams. Just wait, like we, all we need is the three points. Not because we want to compete Man City, it's 10 points. We can't compete Man City no more. But just to stay, like, keep up in that top four and make it easy for ourselves. I don't want to qualify for um, the Champions League playing, um, what's it called, qualifiers and that. You know what I mean? Like, no. Nah. But Martial being really poor this season and he needs to improve himself. Fair enough. Also, another player that um, that actually played well, you had Luke Shaw, who was the only, I would say, impressive player throughout the whole 90 minutes. Because a lot of players play bad. A lot of players play bad. I can't believe that I sit here and I watch a match and I say, a lot of players are playing bad these days. Like, Surely there's something going on in that. Well, who do we blame? Because 11 staff players 
I mean, like, for example, you go to a job, you go to like somewhere like like in, in a retail rest- in a retail store, you can't have eleven staff members not performing, bro. Someone has to be held accountable, and I think someone should be held accountable at Manchester because you can't just keep blaming blaming the players, the players, the players, the players, the players, the players. Like eleven players can't be playing this bad all the time, like, and one person shining. What do you have to say about that? Because I, I know who to blame. I know you know who to blame. I know who you're going to blame. And I blame that person too. However, part of the season, we've been saying, it's May night, they're a roller coaster team. It's always up and down. And do you know why? We don't have a good squad. Mm-hmm. Our squad is not great, unfortunately, you know, because... If you're relying in the past 12 months, we've been relying on Bruno, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Sure. True. Is that enough for you to be consistent every game? Can Bruno be an eight or nine out of 10 every game? Unfortunately, to, you can't. To be fair, we've been relying on Bruno and not Rashford. Exactly. So when you look around at the individuals, bro, let's be real with ourselves, isn't it? Rashford, he does it half of the time. Martial, he's not really about it. Greenwood, in and out, he's a youngster. We don't really have the players where you can say we're going to compete for the top two. So this dip in form is a roller coaster effect. We'll, we'll do well again, hopefully this coming weeks or maybe in a few weeks. But I feel like United fans are deluded if they think that our, our team is strong enough to compete for Champions League or Premier League titles. Unfortunately not. I don't know what you guys think. Yeah, I honestly think that, of course, our team's not that solid. And I always said it for a while, you know. We just need a lot of players, maybe four or five players, as always, because what we have at the back is it needs help. It needs it needs aid. You know, I've been watching too much Vikings, so I'm saying the word aid. It needs aid. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> hey, yes. Um, see, what did you think of the performance of Luke Shaw? Luke Shaw does it for me each and every single time. When I say work ethic, that guy puts in work. You know what I mean? He's what Martial needs to reflect upon. You uh-huh. know, you got Marshall on one side of the spectrum who don't run, who don't do enough. And then you have Luke Shaw, who's always on the go, you know, and his passing, his crossing techniques. He's he's a star right now. And we got to appreciate him. We really do. That's right. Luke Shaw is a new man. You know, I don't recognize the Luke Shaw of today than before, because this Luke Shaw takes set pieces. He goes up and down. He passes the boys defending. The other Luke Shaw didn't do none of that. No, no, that's... That's on tellers, you know. That's you know. Like, like, what are you sure? You take corners? Set pieces? He that. Yeah. He knows And he's taking good ones watched. as well. No, I let's the let's la- came la- in la- his... hmm? Go on, no more. So go ahead, Jen. I'm just going to say quickly, Tellers came in and he saw Tellers on that first day of training, the way he was whipping in the free kicks. Exactly. Sure Shaw said, nah, that's not me. <laughs> he came back to the Carrington at midnight when no one was watching to practice. There was there. I definitely think so. What are you going to say, Amu? Remember, a few weeks ago, I did mention it. I said, my man's been taking and that said pieces for us too much this season. Yeah. His confidence is back. Like, it's just good to see like him shine. Because remember what we said when we signed him when he was younger, when he came to United, so we got a player, we got a superstar, he's going to take United to the next step. We all had a mentality based on injuries in that when he came back. And he had one of the worst injuries in the Premier League. Like, not just once, twice. So for him to come back playing, the, like, playing like this, come on, you got to be excited if you're United fan just because we, we always liked him. But Jack just said it all. I was going to say it before, but Jack said it first. Tell us actually must have made him work 10 times harder than he used to be. Because these performances he's putting in, like Z said, it's always on the goal. Anytime yes. he, he gets the ball, he's going forward. And I like that forward mentally about this guy. And that's good for him. But good old same though. I know, I used to call him a half-hearted guy. But definitely <laughs> I know that he's got his confidence on because I remember watching one game where it was a very good free kick and then you see, the, obviously, the likes of Bruno and Pogba there ready to take a kick. Then I see Luke Shaw's trying to get a move and trying to say, let me take a free kick. I was like, yeah, you're definitely confident now. Like, raw. it's you went about these men. Rashford already got told to go down there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> definitely. Another player that did okay, you know, who played well 
in the previous game, who scored a goal and what happened to score back-to-back goals as well as Daniel James. Yeah, DJ as always, as I call him. Good game, good goal. Doesn't mean he should be playing the next game. Put him back <laughs> on the bench. But apart from that, I'd like to congratulate him, you know, pay homage to him because he, he's, he's had a tough time, you know. Tough, tough time not being in the, in the squad for a very long time. He had to probably go and find himself. In the last two games, he found himself. Amok, how do you think about um, Daniel James' performance? He did, he did say yesterday, though, we just mm-hmm. said that he had to reflect on so many things, criticism, um, watch him play a lot. And he's been working with all the other few other people in the club itself. So they believe that him having these chances based on what he's been showing in the training session. And I think him having the opportunity, because like I said before, all he's using him to run against defenders these past two games, which I've seen. It didn't work this last game, but it worked yesterday. You know what I mean? So, if we got someone he got different ability that can get us more goals this season, I don't let him play. Because basically, basically, we need players who could get there and perform the way we expect him to perform. He's done in the past two games. With the confidence he's getting back, I think give him more games, give him like two or three games, more, and see what you can get from him. If you think he's going to do it week in, week out, let him be that, that guy. Because he's got that pace. As much as I thought that he can play for United, but he's got something that makes him special, that pace. Fair enough. And Jess, what about you, man? What did you think about Daniel James' performance yesterday? I'm not getting ahead of myself, you know. <laughs> First and foremost, I have to give him his respect, and I'm, I'm actually happy for him. He scored, is it three goals in as many appearances now? I have no idea. I, I, think, think, five, I, think, I think five he goals in nine games in, with countries, though. Exactly. Yeah, well, six and nine, six and nine. But mm, three players. <clears throat> it's good for him. And I feel like he needs to be in and around the squad if he's playing well. So he deserves to be in and around the squad at the moment. Um, I just hope he can continue to improve. Um, I still feel he's not good enough to play for United, not to be uh, t- too negative around the situation. But if he continues to improve like this, I hope to God he can prove me wrong. You know? So hopefully he can continue to improve and we'll see much more of him. But who knows? And what about you, Z? What did you think about his performance yesterday? Did it impress you or not? You know, <clears throat> DJ is just there for me right now. You know, mm-hmm. he's he's got to be more consistent and he's got to really show me show me that he deserves to wear the shirt. You know, great that he's scoring the goals right now, but again, doesn't deserve to play every single game. But then again, on the other hand, you've got to ask yourself, is he going to be able to get the chance to score more goals if he doesn't start more games? So... He did well for his, for his full 90 minutes. He did all right. He did all right. Fair enough. And of course, guys, of course, there was, I don't know if I, I'm going to ask you guys, who was your man of the match and who was your donkey of the match in that game? I know. So I'm going to start with you, Jags. You tell me who your man of the match and your donkey of the match was in that match. Very close between Shaw and Matic, actually, but I'll give it to Shaw. I think Shaw was my man of the match. Mm-hmm. Um, Martial, I'm sorry, bro, but you're going to have to be my donkey again this week. Yeah. Donkey of the match. Hey. And what about you, Z? What, who was your man of the match and who was your donkey of the match? <laughs> I'm going to have to give the man of the match to Bruno, you know. Oh, like, oh the guy that gets the girls. I know, he gets it and he gets it all. <laughs> Not because he gets the girls, but you know what? He gets the goals. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, he it was a decent assist, you know. It was a really small touch there with the assist um, to DJ. We, I had to look at a microscope to see if he actually touched that ball. I was like, right, he, he did, assisted he that. Did, he did, he did. It was, it was, it was a nice touch. And I don't know how he managed to see DJ there did. because he was looking in a completely different direction. So, mm-hmm. full props on that and you know what okay yeah he's a great penalty taker and people want to say much about him about that but mm-hmm. listen penalty mm-hmm. is it's not easy it's not easy it's a lot of pressure and the fact that he keeps on doing it consistently you know goalkeepers are scared out there every time he steps up to the penalty spot so give him his props for that yeah. and i gotta agree with jags over there yeah Martial, don't give the day for me i ain't got nothing more to say about that but boy he needs to pull up his socks and then, Mook, what about you? Who was your man in the match and who was your donkey of the match? I got to give my man in the match to Matic. Hey. I felt like for someone, he Different. hasn't played that much. Him coming back into the team, the way he played yesterday, was kind of decent. Mm-hmm. Like, and definitely, I got to go with two guys. Matic got to get donkey of the match because performance-wise, like, it's been really terrible with it. 
and he is my favorite player in Manchester United. It hurt me so much to even give him donkey of the match. But I have to be rude myself. He needs to step up himself. Definitely. My donkey of the match and my man of the match, of course. Man of the match, I had to give to Daniel James for just for what he done. Not particularly what he done the whole 90 minutes. Just just his story. It just touched me. It was a sentiment. <laughs> It was a it, it, it was a matches, yeah. It was a merit thing. Don't give the match for me. I thought was Fred for just giving the ball away at times with his bad first touch, and also the fact that when he went to step up for shots, it was just stop it, man. Just stop it. Stop taking shots. Like it really pisses me off. Apart from that. Guys, do let us know who your man of the match and donkey of the match was for that match. And also let us know what you thought of the, about the match against Manchester United versus Newcastle. We move it straight up to the Premier League weekend round up. Hey, you have What? Sorry to say, but since you were talking about shots, you lot please tell Fred to stop shooting. Ah. Yeah, you lot tell Fred to stop shooting. It's getting annoying. <laughs> You've been saying this. No, nah, no, I'm, I'm getting annoyed. Yeah, stop shooting, Fred. Stop shooting. Stop shooting. Stop it. You know, I Stop wouldn't even... It. I wouldn't even give him a gun to shoot my ox. He's going to miss. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely. Like, I wouldn't pay him as a hitman, you know? What? What? <laughs> you cannot do the eight mountain. Yeah. 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 Man, it's a shameful Brazilian. It's shameful, honestly. Like... <laughs> <laughs> but yes, guys, let's move it straight into the Premier League weekend round up match week 25. And of course, ending up with the game of the week. We this week, City beating Arsenal one a narrow one nil. We had Liverpool losing to their ups. Beautiful to see our ups lose again to their own ups. It's sweet. It is really sweet. Yes, losing to Liverpool two nil. Chelsea one one, of course, and we've got Spurs losing again. Leicester winning. It's been a good week for Manchester United as well. With Manchester United winning three one. Let's go straight into that game against City. City. City versus Arsenal. City again, another three points. Or oh, now a win. A goal for Raheem Sterling, which is quite unusual and quite bizarre because he out-jumped people at holding just to score a goal. I was shocked. Like, guys, what did you think about the game with City and Arsenal? Jake, start with you. Um... Obviously, Sterling, when Sterling scored in the first couple of minutes, I didn't really watch the game. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. Um, I saw the highlights, but from what I saw from the highlights, see, we're just too strong. I think they've won 18 in a row now. Yep. So, Arsenal were never going to touch C. It's a surprise that it was only 1-0, but yet again, another clean sheet. Stones out there is holding it up with, is it Diaz? Mm -hmm. 15 of the season. 15 of the season, clean shit on the season. Uh, they're looking like a formidable partnership at the moment. And Stones is knocking at the door for Euros, you know? So um, mm -hmm. Arsenal they didn't really attack too much. Lacazette came on, didn't do too much. Yeah, I think City will be winning much more games, to be honest. Easy win for City, easy win. The most shocking thing is that you look hot. Adam Eric Laporte can't even get into that, you know, and he was first choice out of all of them before he's they came. He's back as well. Exactly. Like, it's a big boy centre back, it. man. Amuk, did you get did you catch that game as well, Amuk? Yeah, I did watch the match. Yeah, what were you saying about that? Mm -hmm. I thought like Arsenal had the chances. I don't know what happened to them. Not like Man City actually dominated the match in the past, stuff like that. Second off, Man City showed a little bit of yeah, because they were the players. But Arsenal was in it. They could have done something. But I don't know what happened just to Arsenal. But St. Manti played Arsenal. They actually did dominate the full 90 minutes. And one thing that I've emphasize, and he said it before, has Ryan Sterling, he's like five, five, eight or ten, going to jump that two. Mm. And that was a beautiful header. It's good. Call. No chance to keep up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that shocked me, though. I was like, wow. And from there, you know, Manti was going to dominate the match. But Arsenal actually didn't play that bad, though. It's just that they did not take the chances. Definitely. And see, what about you? Did you get to watch that match or saw the highlights? Yeah, I had to watch it. I had to watch it. Um, 
you know, everyone keeps telling me, Zara, why you, why you keep on putting your faith in Arsenal? You know what I mean? I was hoping City would have dropped some points, but again, you know, Arsenal just disappointed as usual. But I agree with them. Look, they had some decent chances, you know. They had some really decent chances in the second half and they really should have converted. Um, if City hadn't had got that goal in the first, what was it, two, two five minutes, um, I reckon it would have ended up drawless because <clears throat> City were not up to form on that match. They, they, they're an amazing team. I give them their props as much as I can as a red but um, you know they just they just went on form and it should have been a draw in my opinion beautiful goal from Sterling though no one was marking him though so I know I, I'm quite shocked we have a saw our uh, ops those dirty scouts of Liverpool losing against their own ops against Everton 2-0 you know, at Anfield you know you know Liverpool, Liverpool getting touched up in their own yard you know no, it's shocking you know we watched that match First goal very early in the first half as well. Very early in the start of the game to just concede that goal. And what is going on with Liverpool, guys? What's going on? God. They're missing their big boy at the back, isn't it? They're missing Van Dijk. And not just Van Dijk, because people need to remember, Aston Villa still scored seven goals against Liverpool whilst Van Dijk was playing. They're missing something else along with Van Dijk. And that is some sort of confidence. I don't know what it is, but they just don't have it. I feel like if Van Dijk was fit, Liverpool still wouldn't be at the top at the moment. There's mm-hmm. something missing, and I don't, I don't know what it is, but when we watch Liverpool at the moment, we're not watching the same team, unfortunately. Well, fortunately for us, I should say. And Everton were all over them. Everton played well. They deserve to win, I think. Liverpool sh- missed a few chances, but I feel Everton definitely deserved to win. And we'll see, um, did you get, happen to catch that one? Or you can tell me what, what do you think was going on down with Liverpool? Because there's just something really going on. Like, what's going on? They're missing the spice, spice. They're missing that spice. Like, I ain't don't there. Have it. I ain't <laughs> there. <laughs> they don't have it. They don't nah, have you'll never spice get the spice. Like, they just need to, they need to sprinkle never get some it. of that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, right now they're just bland. You know what I mean? They're just salt and pepper. And, you know, it's just, it's just, they just don't have it right now. And I don't know where, what exactly it is. You can't really pinpoint it because you can't only put it down on Van Dyke. I mean, dude's a defender. Salah isn't converting the goals anymore. He's, di- he's diving more. I don't know. I feel like it's their attitude. It's their mm-hmm. attitude. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Their players feel like they deserve shit. They deserve things when they really don't. Even Klopp, you know, I used to love him as a manager on a level. Like, I used to think he was a great manager, passionate, you know, always there for the team. Nowadays, I watch his post-match interviews and I'm like, guy is no. just complaining. He's always got something You're to so complain. Loser. Z, like, a soft user, isn't it? Honestly, you know, like you, they just they don't deserve to retain that to retain that um that team. They just they just not there for me. He's down and out right now, you know. Definitely down. Yeah, no, I know there's a lot of things going on in his life and all that, but mm-hmm. you know, it's a job in the end. You know, people are still working when this shit going on. So yeah, do your thing, you know. And what about you, Amuk, man? Do you you watch that game? Man. What you, what's you, what's going on with Liverpool, man? What do you think of that game too? First of all, I just gotta be happy in it. Just mm-hmm. see them go for whatever the guy in foot. Because <laughs> I'm from the other because I'm from the other side, isn't it? So, of course. Just talking about the team, I think the manager got a great role to do with whatever this guy knows the team. Because you still got the same players that won you this league last season. You lot dominated everything. You lost the new barriers. But you're the first Premier League team. He can't retain the Premier League title, but dropped so much points from all other teams that won the Premier League and they, they retained the title. That's shocking. It's Liverpool. Remember, one, I can't remember what specific DJ was. I did say maybe Liverpool should not won the Premier League. As soon as they won the Premier League, Corona came out. <laughs> Look what just happened to them. Yeah. I did say, though, they're not meant to, like, you know. I don't hate them like that, but this like like this said, oh, they think they deserve it so much because of what they used to do back in the days, whatever, or what the country or how the British people speak about them in the media and stuff. Mm-hmm. Nah, now Man City, Man City deserve more praise in past season than Liverpool. They came from nowhere, so I'm happy though. I'm only really gonna say nothing about what's going. I'm just happy to see them crumble. 
Yes, man. We're, uh, we're all happy to see what's going on with Liverpool right now because why they dubbed them the greatest ever team to grace the Premier League. The greatest uh, ever team since sliced bread, you know. That's what they're trying to tell us. Like, like man, <laughs> they wasn't around doing things when they're back to back. Anywho, we had Chelsea losing as well. And, I mean, Chelsea drawing and also Spurs losing. They're in shits now. But let's move right straight up to the game of the week. Of course, my favourite part, the show where everyone gets to announce their game of the week. And why? I'm going to start off because why? My blood clot team, <laughs> Arsenal, my favorite second team, Arsenal, lost again. You know, I, I, right now, I don't even know if we're on page two of the Premier League. I actually don't know. Like, I don't even want to look just in case I have to flip the page. And I don't want to flip the page. Right in the day. But guys, I know we're called Arsenal, but you some Vaseline Manchester City, man. Because we wasn't ready for that, man. We wasn't ready to get doggy. Like, come on. I know we ain't called Arsenal. Allow it, fam. But my yeah. God, my God, my God. Arteta, I feel for you, bro. Like, Arsenal right now, that's the reason why they're in my game of the week. Because I always, I'm a, I'm a second. As you know, Z, I am a part-time Arsenal fan on the low, low key. You know, I support them. So if you're wondering why. But, you know, my first team is Manchester United. But yeah, that game... If it was my game of the week because, of course, I wanted to see what Arsenal can do. And I saw Man City show a style of resilience, you know. They worked really hard. And I was really impressed with Manchester City's defence, their midfield. Not so much of what they were doing going forward, but I was impressed that they can actually, like, hustle, you know, and bustle, you know, now. Because that, that just shows how good they are. And they will be the title, you know, winners at the end of the season. Because they've got something that we don't, you know, fight as well. We don't have that, you know. And against Arsenal, Arsenal tried, but they just couldn't. They couldn't do anything against City. Jess, I'm going to pass on to you. You let me know what your game of the week was. Um, the team that I'm rooting for at the moment this season is West Ham. Yes. So Jay happy Links. to see my boy Jay Link score yet another mm-hmm. goal. And it was a sweet one as well, you know. It was a very good finish. A sweet very goal. happy for Links. Um, Quite surprised at uh, Tottenham, actually, because they actually dominated that game. I think they had like 17 attempts versus West Ham's four or five. But they just couldn't get that ball into the net. Um, Bell came on in the second half and he looks quite lively. He looks good. But I feel like he can't last the full 90 minutes. That's obviously Mm. maybe why he came on in the second half. He's lost pace, you know. He's lost movement as well. I I see it. He's 31 now. Is, is it 31 now? Or is he touching 32? Yeah, he's 31, but you, you can see that he's done out here. like, And it's, he shouldn't be done out here like that. But in that second half, he showed me glimpses of he can do something because he was doing the simple things efficiently and quickly. And he was, he was, it was on point. He had a good second half, you know? And very lastly, it's just quite funny to hear Jose complain again. I'm thinking, bro, you're playing West Ham. you And your first 11 is like, pretty much fit. Kane and Son are playing. How can you complain? He's trying to say how uh, I'm not the problem. Any manager would come in and have this problem. I'm thinking, what problem? Kane's not injured. It's typical when he starts losing, you know, he starts complaining, but that was my game of the week. And Amuk, what was your game of the week? It was the Leicester game, in there. Yeah, Leicester. Leicester, uh, Leicester, uh, Leicester, Leicester, Aston Villa. Leicester Villa, yes. I'm kind of scared, you know, with these lot of planes. Remember, we're facing them soon. I hope our team can get themselves ready, you know. Leicester play some... The, that kid, again. Madison. Um, uh, what was it called? No, um, the, the, no, 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 no. Madison. No, Bans. Who? Madison. Who? This is good. Yes. Boy, oh boy, that was good. Like, I'm really the game was the way they played. Remember, I've been saying this, this manager's name for a very long time. Like, I just think he's one of the best. Like, he's really about the lifestyle, what he says he's gonna do. He transformed this team so quick. Mm. The way they play football is beautiful, man. It's, 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 it's good to watch. Leicester is a very good team to watch. But you know, Brendan Rodgers is known for playing this type of style, you know, um, possession football attacking. Yeah, he's, he's been known for that. But now he's at a, a team where he can really show his qualities because before then, he was at Liverpool, but Liverpool wasn't a team where he can show his qualities because they didn't have the money or to financially back whatever he wanted to do. But sure. uh, he's doing his thing. Mm-hmm. And Z, what was your game of the week? And let us know why as well. 
Oh no, I have to agree with Jex. My game of the week was definitely the West Ham Tottenham game. Like, you know, the Pops is a Spurs supporter, only one in the family. So it's good just to give him that little cheeky side eye smile at the end of the day. You know what I mean? <laughs> and yeah, two ex Man United um, coaches pitted against each other. You know, it's already it's already a fight on the sidelines. So it I was never good. Cropped, you know, <laughs> you know, like yeah. come on. You know what? I tend to forget that Moyes was our manager because yeah. You know, I had that Why Men in Black Mourinho? experience. You know that gun? You know that thing with Men in Blacks? Just forget <laughs> the whole situation. Yeah. I forgot the name of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh. But yes, yeah. as you were saying, sorry. No, I completely agree with you. I mean, it was a time we want to forget about. But yeah, you know, great to see two ex-managers, you know, pitted against each other on the touchlines. And like ne- um, Jeg said, Jay Ling's baby. What was it? What was it? Like, what was it? What was that, it? They had a band, you know. They're still taking a bit. I see Declan Rice playing drums. Dude. One guy playing guitar. You know, you know he's what? Enjoying, he's enjoying oh, it, you know. He's, a, he's, he's, he's enjoying, enjoying the game it. again. And it's so good to see. You know that, right? Because he never had the yeah, opportunity to play though. games. Mm-hmm. He Do never you know had the opportunity. Had, I wish he had listened to me and just done this two seasons ago. Because maybe yeah, he could have been out for Euros. Now... You'll have to score 20 goals from now to <laughs> May when he even gets sniffed at the Euros, you know? But it's good, and I hope he continues to play well. Yeah, yeah So far, he's got a couple of goals to his name at West Ham. He's settling really well, man, so it's just right. looking good, man. And we're all happy to see Jesse Lingard doing his thing, man. We're just happy to see him smile again and just being who he is, and, uh, dancing and being a fool, celebrating, all these nonsense. He's back. <laughs> it is good. Instagram and Snapchat is alive again. For him, yeah, it's only because it's been silent for a while. There's been Trust nothing me. to post. He's got nothing to post. All he can post is him in his house. That's about it. Nothing. Not, no match day pictures. You get me? It hurts. He wasn't there. Yeah, so sometimes I look at Donny Van Der Beek's profile and I'm, I'm, I'm crying, man. I'm like, this guy probably posts every three or four weeks because he ain't getting no game time. Like, because everyone's posting their picks after the match. Like, yo, like, what are you posting today, fam? Yeah, I scored up. And so he's just there in the corner, like. He leaves his phone at home. <laughs> you might as well leave his phone at home, yeah. yeah. Every match day. Yeah, he's the one taking the pictures at the game. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he'd be. Take the group group <laughs> You want to play. We, we, we got goalkeepers holding up the sign yeah, board. Imagine, like, <laughs> might as well have him no, take pictures. Don't Shit. Do that, don't it definitely hurts, man. But let's mm-hmm. move it on straight to the match preview. Manchester United against Real Sociedad this Thursday. Second leg, Manchester United. Four new up in the first leg. Yeah, from the first leg. So definitely, we shouldn't we shouldn't see us lose. We'll be going through, you know. We're probably going to see a, like a big change in terms of the squad. I'm hoping I can probably see my boy Ivorin, that Ivorin guy, you know, Ahmed Diallo start, you know. So I, I like to watch... I'm mad. First yeah. couple of seconds, I saw the skills, I saw the touch, I saw the quality. I saw a glimpse. Oh, sure, glimpse. I was like, raw, black messy. I was like, yeah, cool, say no more, say no more. But yeah, I'm not going to get gassed because I know how I've women's black beat you. Black messy, you know. Yeah. Someone said, we're kind of messy, you know, because that's that's what someone said. Like, what well, kind of messy. messy, you know, yeah, that's yeah. mad. <laughs> but it's just. I'm hoping that I'll get to see him play a bit more. At least give him like 20 minutes or 30 minutes, which annoys me with Oli. So he's giving players five, 10 minutes, like, and he's late substitution. But definitely the game against Ross Sociedad, definite win. Imagine that will be through, you know, to the next round. The last 16 of the Euro for Europa League, sorry. It's going to be a long one. Chase, what about you, man? What do you think about the match against Ross Sociedad? How do you think Manchester um, will fare? The first leg, we, we put the game away. I expect Oli to rest some of the key players. I feel like Bruno doesn't need to start in that game. Rashford doesn't really need to start in that game. It'll mm-hmm. be good to see Diallo play 60 minutes. I don't want to. I would like to see Diallo start because mm. we're 4-0 up. And we got Chelsea on Sunday. So easy win. We're through to the last 16. And yeah, that's all I expect. And what about you, Z? No, completely agree. You know, we need to rest our key players, let them chill because we've got, you know, a decent game happening on Sunday against Chelsea. So, yeah, play our young guns. It was good to see, what's his name, Shurashira? Shurashira? Shurashira. Shurashira. Yeah, it was good to see him. 
yeah, he played for for his first few minutes. He yeah, did well. Only so. should have given him at least ten minutes. But... Should have given him a little bit more time, but you know what? It's just but a flavor. It's a taste. Mm-hmm. Taste. No. And what about you, Amok? How do you feel Manchester United will do against Real Sociedad? I'm with the guys. Now we definitely use the youngsters. I was thinking play um Greenwood, Diallo, and James. Mm. Like, Another game for James. Like, you must like, like him, you know? You no, know, because James getting that form. So yeah. if he misses the Chelsea match, which we all understand why he might miss it, because you need to put your best team against Chelsea. So mm-hmm. give him another run. Let him start this. And I'm with Jags as well. Give, give I'm a, like at least 60 to 70 minutes because I want to see more. Like the glimpses that I saw that day, it wasn't good enough for me. I want to see more because yeah. you took off Jesse for him. So if that's the case, show more of him. Yes, yeah, most stuff. Hope we all think that Manchester United will be winning that game against Royal Sociedad, guys. Definite win. Let's move it straight up to the game against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge this weekend. Crunch time, the, the important game so far this season because we definitely want to win against um, Thomas Tuchel's team and get those three points and remain, you know, on course to finish second in the Premier League because I believe we're going to be finishing second now. It's the best we can do so far. Yes. Chelsea, Stamford Bridge, a stadium where it's been tough for us. Except for last season, we did get that away win with um, Harry Maguire scoring the winner. This time again, Oli, you're not playing Lampard. He's gone. Just let me remind you that he is gone. So don't try and play five, five at the back and all this nonsense. Uh, you're playing Thomas Schuchel, a proper manager, a real coach, you know, a guy that tells his players what they should do and what they shouldn't do. Not just allow people to do whatever they want to do. They kick ball together. Exactly. They kick ball together. So that, yes, so that game, I'm hoping that Manchester United will get the three points. I'm not confident because it's against Chelsea and Chelsea looks look like a good team so far and Thomas is doing his thing. But I'm hoping that we'll get those three points. See, let me pass it on to you. What do you think about the game against Chelsea? I think it's going to be a tough one. I'm not going to lie. You know what? They're on eight games unbeaten right now, seven under the new coach. So they're they're feeling confident with themselves. They're feeling nice. You know, they've lost Lampard. They feel like they've got something to prove to themselves. So it's definitely going to be a tough game for us. Um, I don't believe we're going to keep the clean sheets. Like as much as I'd like to believe that, you know, mm-hmm. I reckon they're probably going to fumble in one or two. But I'm hoping that, you know, I'm hoping that we'll we'll beat them on goal difference. So I'm I'm saying about I want to say three two to us. Mm, I'm going there. And Amuk, what about you? How do you think Manchester United will fare in this game? Definitely going to be a different match from the first one. They got a new manager, different mentality. They have one last under this manager, and obviously they won't like to lose against Manchester United. So we they they got they playing against a different mentality. We should go there thinking like, do you know what? We want the second position. Because you got to accept to take the second position. For you, because we want to see Man City combo, but it's not looking like they are going to combo any time. So we go start in the second position, win every single game we go into. Like, with a winning mentality. It's going to be tough. It's easy to say win because we're not playing, but they should have the mentality. They've, mm-hmm. shown, they've shown us this season what they could do. Definitely get the three point. It's a very good the Chelsea actually got a very good manager, and it's one of my favorite managers as well. So all you got work to do. And what about you, Jax? What do you think Manchester should would do in that game? Um, you guys said it all. For me, the, there's two key issues. The team selection is vital. If Oli makes the crucial team select the correct team selection, we'll have a good chance. I don't want to go through the front the starting eleven now. But I think we all know who should be starting that game. Eric Bailly. <laughs> that's one. That's one name on the team sheet. For Trust sure. me. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, and secondly, the tactics. I don't want to see, like you said, Spikes. I don't want to see five at the back. Definitely. I don't want to see no three at the back. Wait, listen, there's no fans. This is a this is a crazy season. We play better away from home. Let's go there and pretend it's Old Trafford. Let's go there and just play. You know, we don't need to be defensive. So I'm actually going to be positive and actually expect to win. I know Chelsea are unbeaten, but if you go there with the right team selection, the right tactics, we can do them in. 
Definitely, man. 2 1, 1 0. It'll be a tight game, as always, you know. And as you and said earlier, my girl win. Line up, everybody needs to start. I don't want to see Vindelof and Slabbed, you know, because I know if I see them, it's a calam- calamity waiting to happen between those two. He's got, he made us consider the goal yesterday. Maguire. Uh, Maguire. He touched. Mm. Look at that touch. <laughs> Maguire again. You, you're big, fam. They said you're this big, tall guy, but take this ball out. Who the soft touch? You know one thing that annoyed me? He had audacity to shout out Fred. I, I saw him shouting out Fred and some Fred shouting back. I'm like, who are you to shout at any player, bro? Look at your own game. <laughs> and this is the problem with Manchester United. Our captain is one is a player that causes us goals and problems. And how can he lead when himself is not good enough? Spice, are you happy with his assist? He assists Rashford, I like. Are you happy? Yeah, with I was going to say. When did he do that? <laughs> <laughs> when did he do that? No, no. Yeah, I, I didn't see that. Out, <laughs> the when? That's when? 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 Yeah. Exactly. Because you hear from I didn't see that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see that. No, spicy oh, bias, did. you know. Yeah. <laughs> And and you, think I'm give, you think I'm going to give him props for that? I ain't going to give him props for that. No, no, no but no, who no, is no. it? Is it Maxim Indian? Defending like, is his first job. We, right. we know that. Yeah. Defending is his first job. However, he, he, he did get an assist. No, he cost the goal, man. He gave the ball away for a guy that wears a Gucci band bandana, bro. I'm not, I'm not having that, fam. No, I'm saying Maxim Indian was running through our defence. Running through our defence. Sorry, carry on. Our defence is not good. This because of him. He's 80 million. He's meant to be this almighty. 80 million. That's mm-hmm. a lot of money to spend. He's 10. I told my dad, I'm going to say this again, that he's 10 million more, more than Van Dyke. My dad screamed on the phone, What? And I said, Yes, he's 10 million more expensive than Van Dyke. Exactly. And you know what? We should be getting for 80 million a defender that's quick, strong. That- What's it called? That's intelligent, very good on the ball, and also smells nice. He doesn't sweat. He does. He sweat doesn't smell like beer. He smells perfume. That's what you call an eighty million defender. And Van Dyke apparently, Troy Deeney said one thing about Van. I knew he was gonna say. I knew he was nice. gonna say. You know, he roughs you up, but he smells nice. You know, like that. You know, at least when you're your striker, you're def- you're getting have up by Van Dyke and you're on the floor. At least you can do that. At least it doesn't smell bad, you know, when I'm on the floor. <laughs> you know, Van Dyke smells nice at the end of the day. It's all right. But well, that's what true. I'm expecting from the defender. But definitely, guys, Bay needs to start. Yeah. And whether he wants to play, I know he's going to play two and, and the holding midfield. You know, he's going to play McFred because he's going, always wants to babysit. And we definitely know that he's not going to play Bay. He's going to be playing that weak ass Viking. Viking, and you're not even a Viking, you know, these Swedish guys. You know, I've actually thought that they're actually the pussy versions of the Vikings because they always have blonde hair, blue eyes, or the Danish guys are the strong. So, with, with this guy, the Scandinavian connection with um, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer and um, and the love. The love. it needs to stop because it's costing us this favoritism. And it, I know the reason why he's picking him because he's a Viking, I'm a Viking, you know, you know, you're gonna play. Do it. But in the red dress, isn't it? Lendler, no niggas the red dress, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's not even that, man. <laughs> no, hey, you, yeah, he wears a dress, and that's as it is. When, when, I, when I see, I'm not being rude, but if I ever see my defender in a dress, yeah, see, I'm not trying to def- uh, disrespect anything. I'm just saying, if I see my defender, he's supposed to be a defender, yeah? Defenders are not supposed to be nice, you know, and soft. Uh. They're supposed to be and scary, you know, as a striker. You it should, just makes you, you look, look soft. As a good defender, I believe you shouldn't be good looking. You should be ugly, you know? Because it makes it it makes it even worse for a striker, you know, when they look at you and be like, uh, <laughs> you know? <laughs> when they turn around with the ball, they just be like, uh, man. They get distracted easily. Sorry, guys. That's why Van Dyke. That's why Van Dyke is good, isn't it? Because yeah, training is like, Van Dyke, like, oh, he's yeah. a cute nigga, like. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean, no homo, yeah. no homo thing yet. What do you think, like? Because my man said he smells nice, isn't it? He smells like, nice. Imagine what other niggas thinking. Imagine what other players thinking about. And Van Dyke's got a perm. Guy. He's got a perm. perm you know what I mean? Nice hair and all that stuff. I get what he's saying, though. You know what I mean? His hair probably smells nice. So it's like, you get me. <laughs> That's, I, that's 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 eighty million pound worth of defender right there, right there, Van Dyke. Per ounce, per ounce. Well, know, is like, huge. <laughs> oh, honestly speaking, man, it's the truth, man. I've had enough of that, our uh, captain, man. I can't believe he's uh, our captain sometimes, man. Not captain material. No, no. But definitely, um, as you guys were saying, guys, <laughs> we've, we've kind of lost track in that one. 
No, he's talking about Chelsea, that. winning the Chelsea match. Yeah. We all said we was going to win Chelsea match. Then we start talking about individuals mm-hmm. that players. But definitely, guys, we, sh- we should aim to win this game. We can't go into that match thinking. Because I hope that the, get- the players will be up for it. As always, the players should be up for it. But this, you know, this season against the big games, the, the, the big games, the top six, we haven't really won a game. I don't believe we've won one. Don't worry. I, don't I feel like one. we got this. We got this. I, I feel like Liverpool Rashford's FA Cup, not in the Premier League. We beat Leicester, no? Leicester? Did we? Yeah, 1-0. Mm-hmm. Did, did they draw? I don't even know. I feel, I feel we beat them 1-0, you know. Yeah, see, it's, so, it's so hard. It's so hard. Now, I think we beat them 1-0. Yeah, like, you see, because we, keep, we can't keep track of what's going on because it's been... All I know is that, yeah, we haven't really won in any of the big games. So, against Chelsea, we need to win for the fans. Just for the fans. So, Manchester United, please, you know, please us, man. That's all you know I what would... needs to happen? Atletico mm-hmm. needs to pat in Chelsea, bring them down a notch or two, and then we come and we just finish them off one time. That's what needs to happen, you know. Like and... this, savage. Mm-hmm. This, no. savage. Come I on. like that. It's true, though. That's true. Because if they, if, if they lose, that's going to be the first loss, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The money they got there. And when we, they, obviously, we go to pitch, show this money that this is United. Chelsea, well, you know, they, we already know. We don't, United fans don't like Chelsea. Because under Mourinho's era, we suffered a lot. Mm-hmm. Chelsea was the only team that beat Manchester United. And week in, week out, every time we played you know, Chelsea, we get patterned. So it's, yeah. let, let it take a turn. We wanted to turn around for good. But, and we beat Z. That, just smoke them. Just smoke Chelsea this weekend. We need that. For real. And we come with a double blow. Shotgun style, <laughs> like <laughs> definitely, we want that. Give them Ricky thing, innit? Mm-hmm. Ricky, <laughs> <laughs> running in slow motion. And I shit, know, like. <laughs> guys. Let's hope again. Let's hope Manchin I get that W. Anyway, guys, we have come to the end of the show. It's been a good one, good chat as always. You know, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm about to pass it on to the guys so they can plug themselves in where you can find them on the social media platforms. See, as you are the special guest, let the people know where they can find you and what you do and what you've got coming and all that stuff. Plug them in. What's happening? What's happening? So you can find me Afrochronics, A-F-R-O dot C-H-R-O-N-I-X-Z-X, represent. Jeez. Got the natural hair going on. You know how we do. Mm-hmm. Keep the curls looking fresh. Advice for the males and the females. So mm-hmm. hollow me. Mm-hmm. And Amuk, where can the people find you? Oh, they'll find me on Instagram, um, pretty flack on the school 16. Mm-hmm. And what about you, Jex? And uh, this, are you gonna say it with a bit more passion or like last week? Hey, you promised, you know, hey, no, Jex, Jex, you made a promise, you gotta fulfill that. Mm-hmm. You made your promise yesterday. You say if you know, if you know, do the thing, you come up more. <laughs> we got the six points, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Instagram Jegs underscore United, you know. And of, of course, guys, of course, you can always find me on this channel. And of course, you can find me on the official Instagram account, which is Reggie Night TV One, baby. And of course, the official TikTok account, which is Reggie United TV. And follow my personal Instagram account, which is Ivorian underscore Spice. Same across for the Twitter and also the Snapchat, guys. And as always, remember to subscribe, smash that like button, of course. Remember to share, share to people that you like, people that you don't like. And also, ladies, remember to share to your ex, your current boyfriend, and let them know that you found a man that does it way better than them with the link. Thank you. And as always, guys, remember to keep it united because we are united right now. And remember to keep it red united. Peace out. We are out.